Hello and welcome to this lesson on the basics of soundproofing. So if you are just diving into how to soundproof a room, if you want to build a soundproof recording studio like I did, then this video is perfect. I am going to teach you the three keys to soundproofing. This is like the fundamentals that will help you understand everything else regarding what you're going to do to build a soundproof room. And I'm also going to teach these three fundamentals in a practical way. So you'll see the theory and then I'll show you exactly how we applied that theory in the field, building my own soundproof backyard studio, as you can see right here. Uh, this was a freestanding structure in my backyard uh, and it is completely soundproof and I will show you how we did it. Before we jump in, I do want to say that I have a free soundproofing workshop. This is 40 minutes of great teaching, giving you all of the things you need to know to design and build your own soundproof recording studio. So if you are interested in that, check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com and you can jump in right away and start watching that workshop. All right, let's jump into the lesson. Here we go. Number one is mass. So the first key concept with soundproofing is that you need a lot of mass to keep sound out. Before we jump in, I wanna say that mass law is one of the key things you can think about when we're talking about mass. So mass law says that for every doubling of mass, you're going to get a six decibel reduction in sound coming through your assembly, which could be a floor, a wall, or a ceiling, a window, or a door. So again, for every doubling of mass, meaning adding twice as much weight to whatever it is, your door, your wall, your window, you're gonna get a six decibel reduction in sound. Now you might be wondering, okay, what does six decibels sound like? That's a great question. The answer is that the human ear can hear a doubling of sound at 10 decibels. So when we talk about six decibels, you're hearing almost a halving of the sound, but not quite. So it's not perceptible as a having in the volume of the sound. But this is a good rule of thumb for understanding how much a doubling of mass would do for your soundproofing effort. Now, I wanna talk about two ways that we applied this idea of mass and soundproofing to the studio design in my own studio. So the first one is that we built uh, the studio on a concrete slab. Concrete is extremely massive, has a ton of weight, and it is a great way to have a soundproof floor in your studio. So if you're building in a garage or in a basement where you have a concrete slab already in place, then you are good to go. Another example of how we used mass was we had two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on all of our inside walls and our ceiling. The drywall is a great option for adding mass to your room because if you get the 5 8 inch which is the heaviest drywall in most commercial purposes uh, and you put two layers back to back together then you will get a ton of mass this stuff is very heavy as you can see here we had to lift it up using our backs and put it on the ceiling and put it on the walls and this stuff definitely keeps sound out Another example is we made a door into the studio that weighs roughly 300 pounds. And the way we did that is we used a solid core door, which is solid wood. We put eight pounds per square foot of sheet lead on the back of that door. And then we put three quarters inch of plywood over that sheet lead. And this door is just super massive and heavy. And that is also helping to keep the sound out. All right, number two is air. When you are building a soundproof studio or a soundproof room, the number one thing you want to think about along with mass is making sure that it is absolutely airtight. Wherever air goes, sound goes. So if you have even small holes in your studio around the door, around your windows, or through your HVAC system, then you might be getting some sound traveling through those holes directly into your, your room, which will make your soundproofing useless. So every single area around your room needs to be airtight. So how do we do that? One of the main things we do is we use something called acoustic caulk, which is a special caulking material made for acoustic purposes. And what you can do is you can put the acoustic caulk around all the perimeters of the floor, the ceiling, and the corners of your room where the drywall touches either the floor or another piece of drywall, 
and that will seal up all the little air gaps where sound could potentially reach underneath your drywall and into your room. We also add putty pads around all the electrical boxes. These are just like uh, putty you may have played with as a kid, but it also has an acoustical purpose of reducing the amount of sound that can travel through those boxes. Because again, you're putting light switches and, and uh, lights in your wall, that's putting a hole in the wall. So you wrap the acoustic putty around the back and then you can seal up any edges with the acoustic caulk and it makes that area airtight as well. Another example is using the door, we have weather stripping and magnetic weather stripping around my door so that no air can come through that door at any point and that will reduce the amount of sound that's coming through that door as well. The third and last important key concept to soundproofing is this idea of flanking paths. So a great example of understanding what a flanking path is, is in the book, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros by Rod Weiss, which is sort of the Bible of home recording studio soundproofing that I recommend all of you read. There'll be a link in the description below. But he has this example of if you held, hold up a piece of wood and one person taps with a hammer on the end and you put your ear up to the wood, you're going to hear a very loud sound coming through the wood itself, not traveling through the air in the room. Like if you pulled your ear off of the wood, it actually would maybe sound quieter in the room itself. That is a flanking path. Sound is traveling through a material in your structure and is actually sending it through and making it maybe even louder entering into your room. So with soundproofing, we want to eliminate the chance of all those flanking paths where sound could travel through the structure and into your room. To do that, we want to think about where there's all these places that that could happen, whether it's through the outside walls coming to your inside walls, whether it's through an HVAC duct system, whether it's through pipes in your sewer line or piping going through your walls, those are all possible flanking paths. So how did we get rid of the flanking paths in my home recording studio? For one thing, we built what is known as a double wall system. This means there is a one inch air gap between all of the walls and the outside walls of the building. We use special acoustic clips that attach to the top of the double wall system to attach it so it doesn't wobble or move around, but also so that the sound won't travel from our roof rafters down into our inside wall. We also used what's known as a hat channel system or furring channel system. What this is, is I also use special acoustic clips called IB1 clips that I placed in intervals along the roof rafters of my studio. And then I attached 7 8 inch furring channel or hat channels, which are metal channels that clip right into the special acoustic clips. You then can take your two layers of drywall and drill them directly into the actual metal channels. This has the effect of decoupling the drywall from the roof rafters. And what that does is it makes it so the sound that would be traveling through on the flanking path through the roof rafters so that the sound cannot reach the actual inside layers of drywall, making it so that sound won't be heard inside the studio from the outside. Those are just some examples of how we reduced sound traveling from flanking paths. As long as you keep the idea that everything needs to be separated using either air space, like in our double wall system, or actual acoustic clips that will decouple the transmission from one side of your building to the inside of your building, then you will be good to go. So let's talk about what we just learned here. So in conclusion, you wanna make sure that you have lots of mass. Mass will keep sound out or keep sound in your room, thus making it much more sound isolated and soundproof. Number two, you wanna make sure that your room is airtight. Remember to use special acoustic caulk and make sure there's no seals around electrical outlets or any of your windows or doors and you'll be good to go there. Lastly, you want to reduce or eliminate all flanking paths in your system. So anywhere that the outside structure touches your inside structure is a flanking path and you need to either eliminate it or use a special acoustic clip to reduce the amount of sound that will transfer from one side of your building or home to the inside. I hope you have found this soundproofing basics lesson helpful. 
If you want to take a deeper dive into soundproofing, I highly recommend checking out that free 40-minute soundproofing workshop. You can watch it immediately. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com and you can begin learning all about how to soundproof your studio and go in depth and leave with a formal plan that you've designed of how to soundproof your home recording studio. I want to thank you all so much for watching or listening on our podcast. And until next Monday, I will see you all later. Thank you.